Hi, Fleecord team. It's great to be speaking with you. To start off, can you tell us what you think about Zinktree's product? You are selling a truly unique, fantastic product that makes a massive difference to the market. In terms of doing what it does and what we need to do today, it's superb. But it's a fast growing market and it's a fast moving market. And there's a lot of people out there trying to do what you do, nowhere near as well as you do. But we talk about a 0 to 60 time in the UK, which is, you know, 0 to 60 miles an hour and, and how many seconds. And I'll use that uh, analogy with Zinktree as well. We've been able to go from 0 to 60 in, in, you know, eight weeks, 12 weeks. With your competitors, that'll probably be eight months or 12 months. And I think that's a real unique selling point that you guys have got, how quick it is, how easy it is, how quick you can scale and how minimalistic it can cost from an internal resource perspective. And I think the, the more I learn about the product, the more I see and, and, and understand just how great it is. Like any new business and any new product, it needs to be credible. And it's one thing me coming in as the new guy to the company saying, hey, I know this great product. It's going to be fantastic. But what if it's not? And the fantastic thing is that we've been able to bring this in and we've been able to demonstrate that not only is it a credible product, but it does what it says on the tin. We told you it was going to reduce the time it took to train people. We told you it was going to increase our productivity. We told you it was going to increase standardization. And guess what? It's done all three. And so then when you kind of open the conversations with the other departments and other people kind of look at operations and say, hey, what are those guys doing to perform so well? We talk about Zingtree. If you're doing well, people soon take attention and pay attention because they want to piggyback on your success. And Zingtree is about success. So not only talking about kind of a success within the UK business, but also we're having conversations with European business, the North American business, the Asia Pacific business. I'll come back to the word credibility. Without the results that's delivered, none of those conversations would be possible. If we haven't delivered the results on the back of what Zinctree has helped us to deliver, nobody would be asking me how we did it. The credibility Zinctree has got within our organization is sky high. It would be a miss of me to say, this is purely Zinctree because we've got two very special people on this call as well. And, and, and Rachel's joined the business and has been absolutely superb right from day one, following on from experience days. And Marie, you know, has hit the ground running as a knowledge architect. And um, personally, I'm, I'm very excited because you've got two very capable people here. That's an amazing answer in terms of the impact or the ROI that Fleetcore sees from Zingtree. So can you ta talk a little bit about how you measure that impact? What is that impact? So look, being entirely transparent, and, and I'm sure most of your customers will say exactly the same thing. When you expend money in a business, you kind of need to justify the finance, accounting, the MD, whoever it might be, that you're not pouring money down the drain, but you're going to get a return investment on it. I was really confident when writing the business case as Intrieve that we were going to see a return on investment. And I knew I was going to be conservative with the figures. A lot of the things that we have kind of seen success on have been relatively um, you know, additional benefits. So we knew it was going to improve and increase the time that we could get people up to competency. What we didn't expect was just by how much to put it into perspective, if I needed some resource, it used to take me, you know, X amount of weeks to recruit. Somebody might start on day one, by the time they're fully competent, it used to take up to 13 weeks, by which point the operation had either fallen over or we didn't need them anymore. Now we can do that potentially within three days. Now that is a real game changer for us because not only are we massively shifting the dial, but we can actually more responsibly respond to peaks and troughs and demands. So that is a huge, huge thing for me. It's a little more difficult to put a pounds and pence figure on that or a dollar and cents figure. It's a little harder to quantify sometimes because actually the cost that you pay whilst you're training someone is often a hidden cost, it's an absorbed cost. But actually the very fact that we can get people in, you know, and fully competent, you know, potentially two and a half months previous to what we could have done has been a massive game changer for us. I think the other kind of element of that is around productivity. We're actually in the year, around about five FTE lower than we, we kind of started the previous year. This year, we've got a target to exit the year about 8.5 FTE lower. We're already five FTE or 5.9 FTE towards that target. A lot of that is down to the increased productivity. You know, there are other fields at play as well. Um, having the knowledge all in one centralized place, having that standardization, having people come in on day one and being able to be productive. Marie, please do keep me honest here. I do believe actually there was a new person who started and actually after three or four days, they were able to process about 80 or 90 emails just by following Zingtree. Now to put that into perspective, our biggest performers who have been in the business three, four years, 
maybe would process 120, 130. So although not quite to that level that we'd expect after many years of tenure, I've already been an absolute out of the water from what you'd normally expect from somebody who would be so new to the business. I think we also had a risk as well in terms of we had an awful lot of tenure and some of the knowledge of processes were stuck in people's heads. And what mm. we've been able to do is extract that and put that into a Zingtree format. From a risk perspective, we're, we're covered as a business. We've been able to cross skill that quite effectively. Um, and if that knowledge was to leave the business, we're still secure in able to be, to continue servicing customers in certain ways. Um, and again, you can't really put a price on that because it only really impacts you when that person leaves the business and you caught short. It's a really pertinent point here is that it's not just necessarily about the return on investment. It's about that insurance policy. It's about making sure that if your 30 year, 10 year colleague who has got all those knowledges and process and everything in his head, wins the lottery, gets hit by a bus, um, goes to fight in Ukraine, whatever it might be, it is that insurance policy that, that all that knowledge is not just in one person's head, it's mapped out into Zingtree because it's one of those risks that we don't talk about, we don't want, we don't need, we don't like. But if it was to happen as a business, you know, we'd have been down the street without a paddle. <laughs> and that's something you'll never see in a business case because it doesn't give you back the, you know, the dollars and the cents of the pounds and the pence. Yeah. That is just such an understated item. Yeah. It really is. Speaking of pounds and pence, where did the budget come from for Zingtree? Look, like most big organizations, we, we have an annual budget process where we typically, around September time onwards, um, we pitch for what funding we want for the year ahead. And, you know, we typically kind of write a business case and we, we kind of look to secure budget for the next 12 months. I actually only joined the business after that process had happened. So I'd missed that opportunity to pitch for that initial budget, which often makes it 10 times harder because if you were to then pitch for subsequent money, you know, the finance director turns around to say, well, it's not a budget. We've not got it. So that makes the return on investment really, really important. And that's why it was really kind of key to me to be able to demonstrate the benefits we could get from Zingtree in year. Actually, it wasn't something that we could say we're going to pay it back within two, three years. We could demonstrate we're going to get benefits and we're going to get these benefits pretty damn quick. And by being able to do so, we're able to kind of together build up a really strong business case that actually kind of demonstrated, that yeah, it might cost us a bit of money, but actually if we spend this money, we're going to save X amount of money. And I'm going to come back to the C word, the credibility word, by being able to deliver on that initial business case and being able to get that funding, we've been able to do so because... You know, we're a Fortune 500 company and, you know, dollars do rule the bottom line. If someone is not going to kind of deliver a return on investment, then more times than not, it will not get signed off. And that initial return on investment was so key. And that's why we want to work with you guys to kind of tell our story because it can help so many other people as a business case. But equally speaking, that ongoing return, things like we spoke about in terms of that kind of single point of failure, removing all that, these are all additional benefits that are kind of just strengthened our case. What matters the most to you in your job? Like, what are your biggest priorities? My stereotypical answer, the, the answer which everyone's probably expecting is to do the right thing for the customer and the business. I'll probably turn on my head a bit. And I think truly doing the right thing for the colleague is the right thing to do. Because if you look after your colleagues, they'll look after the business and they'll look after the customer. So what Zingtree has allowed us to do is to invest in our colleagues, which then kind of gives us that return on investment with the business and further beyond. So absolutely, you know, doing the right thing for our people is my biggest priority right now. And like I say, if we do that right, we've got aligned objectives, we've got aligned line of sight, then everything else falls into place quite naturally. Hey, Rachel, hey. I'm going to turn the question to you as well. As head of operational excellence, what matters to you uh, in your day to day? Well, I could just quite easily sort of piggyback on, on Mike's comments there, because it is colleagues and customers that are obviously paramount for us. So um, I think the key premise of my role is continuous improvement. And I think we had to start with the basics and get all of the processes mapped. And that's essentially what we did first of all. And that was a, a humongous task. But what that's allowed us to do is obviously support the colleagues. They were crying out for cross-skilling. They were crying out, to enable them to service the customers better. So 
that I think was a really key benefit for us. But then we can explore other options using the tool as well, such as how can we use the customer facing trees as well? So how can we actually keep our agents available for the kind of really meaty queries and the really complex type of work and allow the customers to self-serve as well. So I think that's what's really important that we continually move forward, continually evolve, and we needed tools to allow us to kind of progress with that, that didn't kind of hold us back. I think that's what we're, we're starting to find. We're still quite early, I think, in our days with Fleet Core with Zingtree, but I think we're quite excited that there are lots of different avenues for us to still explore. Three jobs as knowledge architects. I'm going to turn the question over to you. What's some of your biggest priorities in your job? I think Rachel and Mike have hit the nail on the head. It's making sure that our customers uh, have the best experience and that our agents are supported in everything that they do as well. So how many teams or individuals are, are currently using Zingtree? So we've got all of the operational areas, which are, you know, 80, 90 people. We've got all the customer management, which is about another 40 or 50. And we're just in the process of getting the uh, sales team onto it as well. I think what we've we found with it is that it's so multifaceted. In previous roles, I probably looked at it purely operationally. We've been able to look at it from a, a sales perspective. We had a great call with one of the other clients and we actually shared some best practice with those guys as well. Excellent. Well, let's turn it over to Rachel and Marie. So let's talk about creating the Zing trees. So who's responsible for creating the actual trees and the content? That would be me. Okay. What's the content creation process like for you? Are you working with other people? Is it a solo effort? Where are you getting the, the kind of content to put into these trees? Tell us a little bit more about your process. It's more of a joint effort, really. I can't take all the credit. So we've started mainly with the operations department. We've had learning local work and instructions that have already been in place um, for a while. So we've converted those and we've made them into separate kind of processes we've broken that down a lot so there is a simple step-by-step -step guide using the zing tree tool we've added in screenshots within there as well so that it's easier for for the agents to use we've had a lot of of support from some of the agents across the floor as well so some of those guys have been building the zing trees and then i've gone in and managed it and and governed how we want the zing tree to, to look in the end. In terms of just a little bit background for myself, where is Fleet Corps? Are you remote or are people in offices? How many offices? One of the challenges we've got is that as vice president of operations, I've got five, six different sites. And the challenge with that is for each location services, a certain product, a certain product line, so on and so forth. Now the element with that is it's great and it's been successful for, for many, many years, but I didn't just want to be successful. I want to blow us out of the water. Now, the only way to really do that from an operational perspective is to have a resource that's fluid, that's liquid, that can respond to peaks and troughs and demand. So whilst phase one of, of this zinc tree rollout has been localized standard practice, standard procedures, stage two will absolutely be, what can we do cross-reference, cross-offices, cross-departmental, even internationally, because I believe in a 24 seven service. If, if, you know, we're shut in the UK, why can't we have one of our offices somewhere else in the world being able to service our customers? The long-term aim is to be a lot more fluid with what we've got. And that's one of the beauty of the products. We're able to do it with Zingtree, whereas previously we had no way of doing so. What are some of the favorite features that you all really benefit from? I think so far we've probably used Logic the most. I think that's a really useful feature because without it, I think it would be really easy to be overwhelmed with the, the amount of information that would end up presenting to, to agents. So um, I think when we first heard about the logic, that probably went over our heads slightly. Um, but as we've kind of got used to it, I think that's probably the main feature that we've, we've been using within the trees. Um, I do like the concept of like the V look hooks and the web hooks. Uh, we haven't necessarily used those as of yet. I think we don't necessarily use the right systems. We don't use Google sheets, et cetera, but as that develops and using things like Excel, I think we'd be really interested in using the V lookup options. I, I see a lot of potential in that feature. 
um I quite like as well how um simple it is in terms of um creating like a branding uh, particularly uh, that was probably one of the key features that were sold to us in terms of the customer facing trees it seemed very simple and easy to to sort of integrate and we probably found that with the the salesforce integration despite a couple of hurdles <laughs> but um yeah the it doesn't require dev work which is you know very hard to come by at the moment so the fact is that it is quite a progressive tool but there's kind of a simple premise that underlies that i think that's that's quite an appealing element for us as well was there anything that we could do or have done differently to make it a better more efficient process for you to be able to go live even faster it's an interesting one because I think how we're using Zingtree currently is very different to how we used it ex at Experian. Um, and I quite like that in a way because it kind of proves that it, it's not a one size fits all. We've had a lot of guidance. Oksana has been absolutely amazing. I think without her support, we wouldn't be where we are today because every challenge that we've had, we've kind of expressed what it is that we're trying to achieve, what the challenge is. And she's given us like an array of options and supported us to complete what it, whatever it is that we needed to complete to move on to the next step. So I think a part of our success is having that hands-on support throughout every step. Um, I think as we've become more familiar with the tool, we've then realized actually certain features we probably wish that we'd implemented sooner on some of the trees. So particularly like the logic, for example, I think we just had to get our head around Zing tree as a whole and, and what it, what we wanted to start putting in there before we thought, actually, we could probably redo some trees with added logic in there. What advice do you have for us? There's a lot of things that made Zing tree stand out for me. And that is, you know, firstly, the technology is fantastic, but the biggest thing is the culture for people from the bottom of my heart, you know, you've made my life a hell of a lot easier. And uh, I really, really look forward generally to the next 12, 18 months because I generally believe this product, I believe in the people, I believe in Juan, the leadership team, and I believe in all of you in this room here to take us to the next level again. So, so thank you from me.